Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Mighty Joe, man, how you doing? Pretty good, Jared. How you doing? Good, man. It's another beautiful day here. I mean, it's a little windy, of course, but uh, not that bad, man. The sun is shining. Yes, it is. All right, we got some good questions for y'all, so we're going to dive right into them. We're going to start with one from WC Red Raid, who wants to know who will be the next boom in football recruiting. You know what? These questions are are... I get why people ask them, but they're usually difficult. Unless there's a silent commit, and I'm not I'm unaware of any silent commits right now. Uh, I will tell you Trey Taylor, who doesn't have an offer yet, but he's a DB uh, out of Frisco Lone Star. He visited last weekend, and he's one of about, I think, a half a dozen defensive backs for about three remaining spots in this class. So I, I feel like the next commit will be a 2019 defensive back. And I'm going to go ahead and say Trey Taylor, even though he doesn't have a, a offer, because I think they're going to get down to it. I think what he brings both on and off the field, uh, they're going to end up they're going to end up offering him once all the dominoes fall. But that, the first couple of dominoes have to have to fall. And but I, I think Taylor will be will be one of the guys who ends up on the list. And at least as far as who the next boom is going to be, I think it will be a defensive back because, man, they need him. Like they need three more. Tech Freak wants to know is Wells pro tortilla. Well, first off. Uh, he didn't pronounce it right. He didn't pronounce it as a Texan in, in his uh, introductory press conference. I don't know if you remember that. Is it tortilla? He said tortilla, <laughs> which there are worse things to mispronounce, but I mean, tortillas are kind of a big deal here at Texas Tech, part of the football tradition. Uh, I, I, you know, he mentioned that in, in, I don't know if it was in an interview I had with him or, or uh, somewhere along the lines, he mentioned that he came out here, I believe, as a coach one time or a player, I can't remember, and he remembers the tortillas flying and he liked it. And so, yeah, he's pro tortilla. I don't think he's going to be trying to get the security to, to, to kick them out of games for throwing tortillas. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, that hardly seems his style to, right. to call in the Gestapo. Right. Uh, yeah, he's a fun loving sort of a guy, a guy who probably likes tradition yes. a lot uh, and definitely wants enthusiasm. All the coaches, doesn't matter what the sport is, they want a home uh, field advantage. You know, and if, if the fans are having fun, slinging a little bread, you know, that's 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 helping the team. So I think he's probably all for it. Is Mighty Joe Yeager pro pro tortilla oh, slinging? Absolutely. absolutely. You like it? You like yes, that that's 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 a tradition, and I'm all about tradition. I love it, too. I've heard some people that don't like it or say they think it's trashy. I think it's cool, man. You know, I mean, tortillas is a, a, a part of, you know, a te obviously a Tex-Mex thing. And, Definitely a West Texan thing and a, like a Southwest part of the region type type thing. And there are worse things you could throw. I mean, I guess tech fans have been accused of throwing batteries and pushing grandmas down, you know, all this kind of outrageous stuff. And tortillas seem pretty harmless and pretty fun to me, Joe. Yeah, and, and you know, some people will get a free snack. You know, I mean. Uh, you think some of those security guards are picking those up and, <laughs> and macking a couple of tortillas there? Well, I would be, you know, I mean, what can I say? You would be, especially if there were some uh, green chilies oh, yeah. with it, right? Yeah. All right. We got a basketball question, and I understand the, uh, a lot of the fans are are, are nervous. It's three-game losing streak, understandably nervous. Texas Tech Austin wants to know what would make us say, "Uh-oh, we have a real problem with the basketball team," and this season could crater. And then on the flip side, uh, what would make us say, "Okay, we got this. Everything's going to be fine." Wait, where are you at right now? Are, are you are you concerned the team's going to crater? First off, before we get to that, like, are you concerned that that could happen or, or not? Well, you know, anything's possible, but do I think it's likely? No, no, no. I think they're going to snap out of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they had uh, some struggles last year as well, and that turned out to be a pretty good team. Uh, they'll, they'll get it back together. You know, it's just uh, a question of when. I mean, uh, the sooner they get it back together, the better they're going to be set up for postseason. The whole deal really is just to make the NCAA tournament. That's yes. that's that's the number one thing, you know. And you're uh, well advanced towards that goal. So I'm, you know, I'm not I'm not concerned. Uh, well, I'm concerned, but sure. I'm not I'm not terrified. I'm not uh, losing sleep over it. I'm confident that they're going to get it back together. Now, what would uh, signal that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That? Right. Well, uh, with the, basically, <laughs> you know, what you got to do is you got to have. And it's got to be probably Matt Mooney. You got to have yeah. somebody, but probably Matt Mooney, reemerge as that secondary scorer uh, to take some of the the heat off uh, Jared Culver and just to provide some more fuel for the op for the offense. I mean, you know, you're going to have to be scoring 70 points or right about there on a fairly regular basis on down the line if you're going to get a lot of wins. Yeah. So they got to get that cranked up. So that's that's what I'm looking for. I mean, that's the best thing that we could see right now against Arkansas starting straight away is that Matt Mooney gets his mojo back. Yeah, I agree with that. And to even kind of go a little further, I think 
as a team, I, I would like them to get to the free throw line more often. I think that shows that they haven't been as aggressive offensively. Uh, I don't think it's any kind of referee bias or anything. I, they need to get to the free throw line more. I, when they struggled last year, they would get to the line. You know, most of the time it was Keenan, but still, you have guys who can force the issue, I believe, without turning the ball over and, and can get to the line. Um, they, need, they need to just be a, a little more aggressive and, and going to the hoop. Go to the hoop, go to the hoop, go to the hoop. You need to get a layup or go to the line. That's, that would signal to me, okay, this team is headed in the right direction. As far as going down, I mean, to me, I, I guess the opposite. You know, as far as go, like, I, I'm not ready to say I think this team's going to crater. I'm not even really close. To me, in basketball, there's ups, there's downs, and they're obviously in a down swing right now, but they'll snap out of it. I've seen it with, unless you're just like a, you know, like those Duke teams of the 90s or or the UNLV squad, that you know, even Bobby Knight's Indiana team. I mean, those teams were truly dominant teams, you know. I mean, they had an NBA superstar, future NBA superstars on it. So, I mean, uh, I, this, that's clearly not what we're dealing with here. This is a good team. It's well coached. It's got some good pieces to it. That's in a slump. JB Texas Tech Red Raiders wants to know whose name will be ne who, uh, will, will be the next one put in the Ring of Honor. I'm gonna say Wes Welker. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that, that's who it's got to be. Yep, that was my, that was my guy. So, yeah, uh, Zach was the last guy to get in. Yeah. Uh, and Wes, to me, is your next truly great sort of transcendental yeah. talent, you know. So that's that's got to be the next guy. I, there's probably some old-timers out there that I'm not mentioning, some guys from previous, you know, eras. But to me, Wes Welker just seems like the obvious deal there. You got Crabtree coming up at some point. But sure. I, Wes should go in first, I think, if you're going chronologically, because he had, you know, a huge impact, obviously. From Syntex wants to know how much of the struggles on offense from the basketball team do we attribute to coaching? This is just putting the target right between our <laughs> eyes and you know holding our feet to the fire here. What what do you think, Joe? Well, not too much of it. I mean, uh, basically, in this last game out, uh, you had guys that just weren't hitting shots. I mean, you you were getting plenty of looks, uh, and you weren't making them. I mean, you should have had an at least average, probably a little bit above average. Uh, outcome in this last game offensively if guys just hit shots and they're capable of making them we've seen them make, make them before and it just wasn't happening uh, you know and um, uh, the, the, the thing is uh, basically I think this team is really uh, is kind of tightened up you know I think they're they're playing a little bit tentative a yeah. little bit scared yeah. you know and I think probably one thing that the coaches could do uh, is maybe just it's a hard thing to do as a coach sure. is just kind of let guys kind of play through it a little bit. You know, you make a mistake, you, you let it ride a little bit and try yeah. to let them play through things a little bit. You know, I think that's one thing that the coaching staff could, could do a little bit more of. Uh, but basically, I mean, uh, you just, uh, you know, you got guys who are not, uh, you know, running the offense as, as well as it should. You got people uh, missing shots. Uh, you got people driving into traffic, yeah. you know, and, and, and then getting trapped and then turning the ball over. Uh, you know, this is kind of like, uh, you know, elementary basketball and you, you got to have a feel for the game. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of this has to do uh, with the fact that you've got, I mean, you got to remember this is a revamped roster. Sure. You look at exactly. all the losses, huge yeah. from last year. I don't need to name the names, but, uh, you know, if you know anything about tech basketball, you know what they lost. So what that means is you're bringing all these newcomers in. You know, and uh, it's just, it takes time. I mean, it, it, we're at the midpoint of the season. Uh, and it, it soon now, that newness should pass and these guys should yeah. start messing, meshing. We need to see that come on soon. Uh, but I, again, I think all the newcomers and all the losses is something that's contributing to this as well. And as a coach, there's nothing you can do about that. You know, it's just, you know, you lose guys and, yeah. you, and you bring in new guys and, and this kind of happens sometimes. If you're getting shooting slumps, they're in a slump right now. I agree that, uh, look, I, there were shots to be made that they just weren't made against Kansas State, a very good defensive team. Um, that being said, one of the things that happens also in basketball season is you can get in a rut where you're not practicing a whole lot just because there's not a lot of time between the games, and you just can't. You just, there's not time to practice. So what becomes very valuable are these little mini breaks like Tech just had between their Tuesday night game and before they play Arkansas where they could actually teach and go back to how you know how to set screens, how they want the offense run, who they want doing what, um, just kind of getting their game plan back together and getting back to the fundamentals. And I think that's important. I'm interested to see if they're going to be crisper on offense against Arkansas. Obviously, they need to be, but it all comes down, in my opinion, to finally just knocking down shots. 
Just another Tech basketball question. Uh, Murdell Coalition wants to know a little of Tech's uh, team luster has been tarnished over the last 10 days or so. Said uh, Tech had a similar dry spell last year, but it mostly you know coincided with with Keenan's injury, which is which is true. Uh, what is it going to take for the team to get back on track more so than the, than obviously starting to win games again? Uh, as Tech moves further in the Big 12 season. There's obviously, obviously something not clicking right now. So we've kind of touched on it, but what, what do you think is the main thing that needs to start happening for Tech to get back to its winning ways? Well, I mean, yeah, I hate, I hate being the broken record here, but you, you do have to find that secondary score. Uh, that's probably going to be Matt Mooney. Uh, you need to see him bust out of the slump in a big way, and he will uh, eventually. I, you know, I just hope it's this next game uh, because – Whenever you don't have him, uh, you're in danger. You really are because, uh, yeah, yeah, defense maybe wins championships. That's certainly what Beard believes, but you got to be able to score too. You know, if you don't score, I don't care how good your defense is, you're not going to win. So uh, that, that's got to happen. Uh, obviously, the turnover situation yeah. uh, is a problem. Um, uh, you, you, when, when you don't have tremendous offensive firepower to begin with, like a five slam a jammer or something like <laughs> yeah. that, you know, uh, you know, then then you can't afford to be turning the ball over. Uh, I mean, Texas Tech is extremely patient on offense. <clears throat> That's one of uh, Beard's trademarks, and what that means is that you're going to get less opportunities to score. You know, you're going deep into the clock. There's just you're not getting as many cracks yeah. at it. And on top of that, uh, as Beard himself has said, uh, offensive rebounding is not part of this team's identity. It's just not. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, if, if you're not getting offensive rebounds, then you're not getting more cracks that way. Yep. So the last thing you can afford in that sort of a scenario is to be turning the ball over. Uh, so, and they've been turning it over a lot. They had a rare, relatively decent game in that regard against Kansas State. Yeah, 13 turnovers. That's, you know, that's not too bad. That's moving in the right direction, uh, but they need to continue that. They can't afford to get these 16, 17, 18, 19 turnover games no, no. or they're, they're, they're toast. So uh, that's that's another thing that I would add out there is that they just got to really start taking care of the ball. Do you think Corpru or someone else could step into Edwards, for example? Do you think either one of those guys could step into like a starting role and be this, that secondary scorer, or is that asking too much for them? Yeah, I think it's asking too much. Although, uh, you know, I think it, that's potentially a good idea just to, you know, I mean, you could bring one of those guys in. I'd probably go with Corpru right. uh, in place of Mooney and just maybe – he gets a different perspective. Yeah. Coming off of the bench, he sees things. It just shakes things up a little. Helped bit. with Owens last week because he yeah. he provided a spark. I can't imagine if he didn't play as good as he did, how how bad that loss would have been in Kansas State. Sure, exactly. So you know, and I mean, you see right there uh, that Beard is willing to, to make a few changes yeah. here and there, shake stuff up. Uh, and I've noticed that with a lot of Big 12 teams is that you're seeing all a lot of different starting lineups, guys moving in and out. Uh, Oklahoma last night started uh, Jamal Bietemi, uh at point guard last night, the freshman uh, against Oklahoma State. I believe it was his first start. Played a great game. Oklahoma won by 12 on the road. Uh, and I'm just seeing more and more of that. You know, this is, you know, um, it, it's not that weird or crazy of a thing to, to try something like this. So, you know, I don't, I'm not predicting that it's going to happen. But, you know, I, I could see trying that just to, 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 to change things up and give Mooney a different way of looking at things. And who knows, maybe uh, that different dynamic creates a spark for him and helps him get going. All right. Hey, Joe, great stuff from you as always. Great questions from you all. And until next time.